Good afternoon. I want to welcome you all here today to this Your Party Conference. And I say your deliberately because conference is your week, a chance to come together, see old friends, discuss new policies, challenge your party leaders, including me, challenge the chairman this afternoon. And yes, maybe to enjoy a drink or two, just one or two. And it is also an opportunity for me to say thank you to all of you, to all the members of the voluntary party for everything you do, week in, week out, night and day, rain or shine, to champion conservative values in our towns and cities, in our villages and in our communities across this country. And I know it's not always easy, particularly in today's political environment, where the return of the hard left has made political debate coarser and more unpleasant than for many years. But everything you do matters so much. We saw that clearly in May this year, when because of your efforts, we saw what we can do. We were able to upset the odds and deliver such a fantastic set of results in those local elections. We defied predictions and defeated the doomsayers. We held on to Wandsworth, Westminster, Amber Valley and Kensington and Chelsea, among others. And we made gains in places like Bolton, Nuneaton, Wigan, and we took back control of Barnet. <laughs> but they said, they said we couldn't do it. But thanks to you, we did. So on behalf of everyone in our party, let me say thank you. I also want to thank one person in particular, our brilliant Prime Minister, Theresa May. <laughs> when she appointed me to this job in January, she charged me with delivering a set of local election results that would show our ability to take the fight to Labour and win anywhere in the country. That is what we have done together. And it wouldn't have been possible without the professional and the volunteer staff around our country, around the regions and in CCHQ. Brilliantly coordinated and led by our fantastic Chief Executive, Sir Mick Davis. Thank you, Mick, for the support you have given to me personally and the years of phenomenal service you have given to our party. Thank you. I also want to thank my brilliant Deputy Chairman, James Cleverley. and my excellent PPS, Luke Hall, as well as our wonderful Vice Chairman, Helen Grant, Andrew Jones, Ray Chisty, Paul Scully, Alex Shelbrook, Marcus Jones, David Brownlow, Dominic Johnson, Tom Persglove, Chris Skidmore, Kemi Badnock. A phenomenal team with James Morris working on training for us as well. Thank you to all of you. Conference, for me, standing here today, is the culmination of about a 20-year journey. A journey that began on the streets of Hudden South Ward in Brentwood back in 1998. I was a volunteer then, delivering leaflets, going door to door, and eventually putting my name forward for a local council seat. Never for one minute did I believe or even think that I might end up here, standing before you today as your chairman of this great party, 
helping to deliver Brexit and backing our Prime Minister to get a great deal for the best for Britain as we leave the European Union. But that is the opportunity that this party has given to me. A providing opportunity has always been the driving purpose of my politics. And I think the driving purpose of our party. The belief set out so powerfully by the Prime Minister on the steps of Downing Street on her first day on the job. That how far you go in life should be determined not by the circumstances of your birth, but by the dreams you have and how hard you are prepared to work for them. That is the very essence. That is the very essence of what it means to be a Conservative. It is the belief that makes us all, every single one of us, part of the Conservative family. Now, Tom mentioned this. Like all families, we occasionally have our differences. We won't always agree, but the shared belief in delivering opportunity, a belief passed down from generation to generation, will always bring us together. It means that this party is bigger than any one issue because we are a family. Now, conference, we have the eyes of the country on us over the next few days. And we as a party have a very simple choice. We can talk only about the things that matter to us, or we can take the opportunity to show people right across the country that we are, as ever, at their service. That we understand their priorities and hear their concerns. And that we are alive with the ideas and the energy to make the most of the opportunities ahead as we leave the European Union and chart a new course for ourselves in the world. I believe that is what we must do. Because we saw in Liverpool just earlier in the week that the Labour Party wants to undo everything that we have done and achieved as a country and take us back to square one. In Birmingham this week, we're looking ahead, focusing on delivering a great Brexit, a great Brexit deal and on making the most of the opportunities of Brexit as well. Because... Because conference, vital though delivering Brexit is, vital though it is that we get that great deal for Britain and we gain control of our money, our laws and our borders, it is just where we start. We have so much more to do. A stronger, fairer country to build. A greater ambition to fulfil. We want to tackle the injustices that hold too many people back. Things like homelessness, discrimination and the growing problem of mental health. We want to get on with delivering our long-term plan for our fantastic NHS and to continue our mission to give the best education to every child. To deliver on our 25-year environment plan so that we leave our country in a better state for our children. And we want to celebrate and support the thousands of small businesses and entrepreneurs across the country who I meet week in and week out. Those, those are who take the risks, put in the work, employ the workers, pay the taxes, who invent and adapt and innovate every day to drive our country forward and keep our economy strong. And remember, they are also the people that we interact with in our own communities every single day. From the publican and the shopkeeper in our villages to the owners and the managers and the teams in the firms in our towns and our cities. They're people. 
like my parents, who saw an opportunity, took a risk, and gave it a go. They grew their own business. These are the people who want to work hard and do the right thing. People who deserve our support. So these are the things we want to do. The things I came into politics to achieve, and I suspect many of you in this hall today came into politics to achieve too. They are the things that as a husband, as a father, as a member of parliament, I believe politics should be about. The simple desires of people to do better tomorrow than we did today. But also, we have to be honest with ourselves that many in our country today feel that we have lost sight of these things. On many of the issues that are of greatest concern to them, they're not hearing what we have to say. So this week is an opportunity to set our focus on the things that matter to the people we are here to serve. Because that is conservatism at its best. It's pragmatic. It's about getting things done. It's rooted in the everyday worries that people have and in the belief that it is our job to make their lives that bit easier, that bit better. That it is our responsibility to give them every opportunity to be who they want to be. So throughout this week, together, we will set out new policies to help us deliver on the essential conservative promise of opportunity for all. But as that task begins at home, we have to look at our own house, in our party. Because we can't just talk about opportunity for all, we must act on it. It's the right thing to do, but it also matters. Because if we don't, we face an uncertain, and let's be frank, an uncomfortable future. Our country is changing. It's becoming more diverse. Young people are increasingly politically active, inspired by social media, the referendum and political campaigns. New movements are emerging, putting issues like gender equality, fair treatment and opportunity for all at the very top of the agenda. So how do we respond? Now we can be proud of our record. You all know the story. Which political party in Britain has elected not just one, but two female prime ministers? You're getting there before me, this one. Which party put the first female Muslim minister into government? This party. <laughs> Which party appointed the first ever Lord Chancellor? Yes, this party, our party, the Conservative Party. And we have done so much more. We are the party that passed the Equal Marriage Act, recognising in that love is love no matter who you want to marry. We are also the party that took action by reforming Stop and Search so that young black men were no longer unjustly targeted and confidence in the system could be restored. We are the party that shone a light on the problem of discrimination with a pioneering audit of the way that public services are delivered and designed to overcome that discrimination for good. It's a proud record. But if we are honest, it hasn't done enough to change the perception that some people have of our party. So we must do far, far more. 
to show that we understand and that we reflect modern Britain. That means building a party that really is fit for the future. We have, we have made a start. I've set an ambition to ensure that 50% of the people on our candidates list are women, with a plan to make it happen. And within just two months of announcing that ambition, almost 100 more women have come forward and signed up to take those first steps on their journey to Parliament. And that is a great start. We're also focusing on attracting more young people to our party. And I'm pleased to say that we have a record number of young people at our conference this week. But our greatest challenge still lies ahead of us. And that is winning more support from black, Asian and minority ethnic communities. Now, I don't underestimate the size of this task. Our vote among ethnic minority voters is stalling. Yet we can be their natural home. Because these are the people who have done so much to build Britain. A hundred years ago, in the First World War, at least 1.3 million Indians volunteered to fight for the British Army. 70 years ago, many travelled from around the world to make their home in this country and help build our fantastic NHS. Today, Muslim communities in Britain give more to charity than any other group, donating around £100 million to charities every year. A stunning example to us all. And the values that these things speak to, country, aspiration, self-reliance, hard work, are our values too. They are conservative values. So I want us to become the natural home for ethnic minority communities within a generation. Now, since our last conference, we have appointed two vice chairmen responsible for reaching out to Britain's diverse communities. And we need to open up a real conversation with those communities where we are underrepresented, helping us to better understand where we're not doing enough and to know how we can turn it around. That is why we are expanding our outreach team. And we have set up a communities working group to ensure that every community is part of our policy making process so that we better understand how every policy will impact on the lives of those who too rarely have a voice in British politics. And today, I can announce that we are establishing a dedicated mentoring fund to support those who are underrepresented in our party a fund to provide guidance and training to help them pursue a life in public service and to encourage more people from diverse backgrounds around our country to stand for Parliament, become MPs and help us truly represent the face of modern Britain. For if we don't make these changes, this party the oldest political party in the world faces a challenging future. This is essential to our continued success as a party, to our ambition to remain the most successful electoral force anywhere in the world, and to our determination to represent and serve every community in our country, to live up to our name as the Conservative and Unionist Party, our voice and our place at the heart of British politics has rarely, rarely been more important. Because as we saw just last week, the destructive and divisive spectre of socialism is back. 
the belief that the government knows how to run our lives better than we do has returned. The dangerous dogma that says there is no problem that can't be solved by throwing more and more of your money at it is alive once again. So we are engaged in a fight for the very future of our country. A fight with a Labour Party that wants to unravel the policies that have made our economy strong. To unwind the Brexit that people voted for and take us back to square one. That would be a disaster for Britain. Because we know that even the best Labour governments end up leaving our country in the same state, out of money, out of ideas. And today's Labour Party does not represent the best of Labour. It's the worst. An unreconstructed party of the hard left. A reversion to the bleak days of the past. A time that we all thought was long gone. A time of militants, Marxists and misogynists of nasty prejudices and nonsensical ideas. So we must engage in this battle, turn our fire on the enemy, Jeremy Corbyn and his dangerous hard left ideas. Because when we focus only on ourselves, we lose sight of the real threat to the future of our country. And it brings us closer to a government led by him. So let us come together and take the fight to Labour. Because the choice in British politics has rarely been so important or so clear. It's between a Conservative Party the party of the union that wants to spread opportunity and bring people together. And Jeremy Corbyn, a man who sanctions and tolerates division and hate, turns a blind eye to anti-Semitism, embraces militants and extremists, and supports our enemies against our friends. A man who through his actions and his words over many years has shown himself to be unqualified, untrustworthy, unfit to govern this great country. <laughs> so conference, party, it is up to us to take the fight to Labour to show people around the country what we stand for and to show how we will shape that brighter future for us all. To fight and win the battle of ideas that rages in our politics today. To show how the essential conservative beliefs of freedom, fairness and opportunity can build the stronger Britain that we want and that we need. Let that be our focus as we join together this week. As we look beyond Brexit and to the future. As we show how we will make the most of those opportunities that lay ahead for us. As we work together as one conservative family and take that fight to labour. So that we can build a country and a party of opportunity for all. Thank you.